Hi friends and welcome back to the farmhouse. Today I'm getting all set up because we have a huge project going on and I just like to be prepared. You know me, I like to have everything handy. We're going to have some food and some drinks and a hand washing station. We're getting all set up for this big project and this big project that we want to share with you is the building of a garden shed. My husband calls it the she shed and that is so exciting. This project kind of snowballed as it does for us all the time. It started out being a replica of a six by eight double seater brick outhouse. As you know, our house is an 1860s farmhouse. And of course, it would have had an outhouse. There were 11 children at this home in the 1860s. And so a double seater was probably what they had. I wanted this space, which is six foot by eight foot for a garden shed. Because I keep my tools all the way across our yard, so over 250 feet to the barn and down into the lean-to. And the gardens are right here within 10 to 12 feet of the shed. So I wanted to build something here in this area. And I thought it would be cute to add that little outhouse. It would be enough for a rake or two. But some circumstances changed and it's a funny little story that I'll share with you at some point in the video. But I want to show you this is our marked out area that we want to put our shed. It is going to be 8 foot by 12 foot. And you can see here is the vegetable garden just to the left of where the shed is going to be. Now we got this from Lowe's and because of the pandemic sheds were selling so incredibly fast and getting one built by them and delivered actually it's delivered and built on your property was going to be a very long time so they were so back ordered so we decided to take it on ourselves to build it ourselves so it's going to be a huge project. What I was just showing you is that we're getting ready to level the ground. And here at this area, we're about four inches high. And so it's about halfway. So at about the four foot mark, um, we have to level it down. And Bear loves to dig. All you have to say is Bear dig and he will. And actually it was quite a help to get him to dig. Now our soil is really easy to dig in but it's been incredibly dry here this season so it was very dry and very hard to dig in. So it wasn't as pleasurable as it normally is but we got through it for sure. So we're just going to continue leveling off to the point where we know that it's going to be level all the way across. Now here we've gone ahead and we've laid out our boards that are just showing us how big the shed is going to be. I am very visual so I have to kind of mark it off but we're getting ready to start some big process and the shed has arrived. It comes in this packaging and it's crazy how well they pack it in there and you can just see here in the photos that we're, it's just crazy packed in there and so 
it looks deceiving coming in such a small bundle but there it is it is an 8 by 12 shed now this is the Stratford salt box from Lowe's so I will link that down below they include all the hardware as well we did not have to use anything of ours except for the floor and the shingles they do not include the flooring the foundation the flooring or the shingles for the roof that you have to get yourself and of course our supervisors are on staff making sure that we're working hard and getting things done now we've got our ground all leveled and we are putting down a base of pea gravel we felt that that would be a great barrier and it would help our shed set nice and level and be very strong for the bottom so we went ahead and did that and bear is so upset because he just really wants to dig in that pea gravel and we really don't and yep that's how i roll if i can't move it i just knock it over that was actually our homemade tamping stick that we made so first time out and it looks like our foundation is completely level we were pretty excited at this point we're just going to start moving forward now and doing the build at this point we're going to start adding our floor joists and those are the two bodies that are going to run across the bottom that our flooring is going to sit on so i'm going to go ahead and screw those into place and get ready to add our flooring. Once that is done, doing this cross measuring really helps you to know if you're squared up on your project and it's nice and straight on all sides. That's a really neat trick. Now the floor is going down and we chose this heavy duty OSB because it's going to be outside. The next step we wanted to do was to lay out all the pieces where they go. We sorted everything. We have trim boards and we have building boards so that everything is separated and that just makes it go so much faster because we've already moved on to laying out the wall panels. Now we're going to put the walls together on the ground and then we will raise them up. Now even if you've never built anything before, they send you a nice thick instruction manual. It has a lot of pages as you can see right here and step by step they guide you through it. And even though we have built things before there is sometimes a little uh, confusion and right here we were trying to decide um, what to do next it wasn't really clear in the instructions so sometimes you just have to read those instructions over a couple more times to make it clear and once we figured it out it went smoothly You can see here all our walls are put together now the frames are uh, all made and the outside siding is now attached so we're just ready to start raising our walls and as you can see here the first wall is going up it's getting to be late in the day but we're still working there is a brace that they send to help you and having extra people of course is always a blessing getting these things put together so we just kept working
So here we are at the end of day number one. It went really well. We did have some trial and errors, but the day ended and this was where we ended for that day. You can see the sun is setting and pretty successful. We got up bright and early the next morning. You can see how bright the sun is and it was really hot when we were building the shed. It is not typical to be in the high 90s in Michigan but it was but we puddled through trying to get a bulk of our work done before it got too hot. At this point guys I'm getting super excited. It's really coming together. So all four sides are up and we're just doing a little fine tuning. And the next step is actually before the roof goes on, they have you build the shelves and the workbenches. Now this particular unit comes with three shelves, well actually two shelves, a workbench and a pegboard. Now before we go any further, I have a DIY project I wanted to do just because I wanted to add some storage to this pegboard and I wanted it to be more permanent. And I know I could have used the pegboard hooks, but those sometimes fall off when I'm using them. So I'm using these eight inch ties from Walmart and I'm gonna make my storage a little bit more permanent. I used these baskets from Dollar Tree and I had the oval ones. That's what they had in stock when I went. And I'm just gonna thread these zip ties through the pegboard itself and then I'm going to hook them onto the basket and I'm going to go ahead and tie them off. That's going to allow for some sturdier storage. I wanted to put some things in baskets and I know that when I use the peg hooks, I have one in my craft room, sometimes I'll knock the peg hook off and the basket spills. So I just thought this would be a little more permanent and I can totally take the screw out and change it later. It's just a little more difficult because there will be a shelf right above this pegboard unit. So I went ahead and did this on both sides. I did four on the right side and two on the left side. And I thought that would be great storage and it did turn out really well. I'm just gonna clip off the ends and here is the end result. So I've got good heavy duty storage for some of the things that I would like to store in my workbench area. Once all the shelves and workbenches were added in, it was time to move on to framing the roof, which I didn't actually record that. I think I was in making lunch or something and I missed it. But um, Bear seems to think that this is his house and let me tell you, if he continues to grow any faster, he's only 10 months old at this point and he's gotten quite big. So if he gets any bigger, this will be his house. But the roof is going really quick and talk about painting yourself into a corner. Somebody ran out of wood and so we had to help him down so he could continue getting the rafters up. We had one more rafter to put up before we put up the rest of the roofing board. Now the doors are going up. This is going so fast and I just love the shed. I was really disappointed at first that I wasn't going to get my little 6x8 outhouse, but the shed is just turning out so gorgeous. I'm so in love. And these are more bracer bars that if you watch the next video coming out where I do all my updates, I continue to use those boards, just reuse what we have. It is now time for paint and for the outside body of the shed, I went with this paint. Now these paint colors are from Lowe's, but this is the Walmart Color Place exterior satin paint. But the color we chose for the outside is called Clean Sweep and I will link that along with its identification number below. So it only took two coats to give this a nice coverage. We really like the color that the shed was. I was thinking about going with something more of a brick color, but we liked the color so we tried to match that. This is a little more peachy than the color of the primed siding that they sent with the shed, but it was okay. Now for the trim, it was still the Walmart exterior satin paint, but it was in the Lowe's Valspar color leather chair. 
and I will link that down below also. Now, of course, the price of the paint is not included in the shed as well, and we use two gallons of the lighter color and about a half a gallon of the trim color. Now, it's really, really important you caulk any cracks or openings and paint your shed as soon as possible because when you read the fine print in the warranty of the shed, that if it is not painted within 30 days, that voids the warranty to the shed. So very important. We also added a drip edge, which also is not included, but we felt it was really, really important because as that water rain comes down off the roof, it would run right down that board and really rot your shed very quickly. So very important. And then the shingles went on very quickly. The shingles we chose were Royal Sovereign from Lowe's as well, and this color is called Golden Cedar, and I will link its identification number below also. And here we are, the last shingle goes on, and our shed is just about finished. There we are friends we're all done with the build and I could not be happy just look how cute and quaint that shed looks and the placement is just about perfect of course you can still see the vegetable garden off to the left side and here is the kitchen garden so retrieving my tools will be absolute bliss it will be so wonderful I cannot wait now stay tuned next video is about all the tweaks and upgrades that I did to the shed to make it work for me. So a few DIY projects, some upgrades. Be sure to watch. I've left some other videos for you here too. Thanks so much for stopping by the farmhouse. Please give a like. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Everybody be blessed and be safe and I will see you soon.